Well, what's the crack? How are you getting on? You're all very welcome to Buckshot for Friday, the 23rd of the 5th. 24th of the 5th. I'm recording this on the 23rd of the 5th. And this will be going out to the Patreon people this evening. Uh, the Thursday, the 23rd of the 5th. But as you'll probably listen to this as most people, it's the 24th for episode 113. How in the Jesus are you? Are you alright? You good? You ready for the weekend? Huh? You gearing up? You're not going to do a fucking tapping work today, sure you're not. Or you could be listening to this on Saturday or Sunday. Hove the shite. More power to you. Anyway, anyway, moving swiftly along. Uh, if it's your first time listening, hit subscribe. This sh- show is out. <laughs> this show is out twice a week. So it's uh, Ramble Pod on a Tuesday with me just going fucking bananas. And of course on Friday, as you listen to now, it's with a guest. So hit subscribe. It's good crack. So defending the caveman. It, there are more tickets have become available today for another show so like I said give it a follow on uh, Defending the Caveman Ireland or you can follow me on tomomahoney.com or will forward slash gigs you'll find the actual ticket links to the thing but Tom O'Mahony comedy on Instagram and I'll keep you updated or whatever but the tickets available now so are the Waterside Theatre in Derry October 3rd Bor Theatre October 5th in Bor uh, Riverside Theatre in Coleraine October 10th and Untus in Castle Blaney, I think it is, November 2nd. The Dean Crow in Athlone, November 8th. And the National Opera House, November 10th, are all available now. So I'll put the, the gigs link in the the show notes of this. So you can just click on straight through if that's your local theatre. Get yourself some fucking tickets, lads. This is going to be a fucking belter. Right, uh, I'm getting going to get out of the way and get on with the show. My guest today will be known to a hell of a lot of Irish people. She's been in Fair City for the best part of nearly 20-odd, 20, 20 years nearly. Um, her name is Ashling O'Neill. She's a plays, uh, everybody just calls her Cartel. But she doesn't even have, she doesn't have that accent at all, which comes as a bit of a shock to a few people I told. She's actually from Dorky. She's not a bit like her, 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 uh, her character on TV. If you haven't heard of Fair City, fair play to you. Uh, <laughs> it's an unbelievably long running soap opera here in Ireland based in Dublin's Fair City. And it's, you know, it's unbelievably successful. It's got half a million viewers a week. Easy. But we had a lovely chat. Chat down at our house in, in Wexford. We had tea. She makes a good cup of tea. I brought the bickies. And we chatted about basically country life, how she got to where she was, her lineage Basically, she comes from a long line of actors and all the rest of it. And uh, just to crack on, on what she's done in the past and enjoy the shit out of this chat. So, without further ado, please enjoy the brilliant Ashling O'Neill. Ashling O'Neill. Hey, Tom. In the leafy surrounds of lovely Wexford. Glory County Wexford, yes. It's flipping gorgeous out the country, isn't it? Yeah, it's gorgeous. I love it. Do you, because you're, to, to people, to intro you properly, because mm-hmm. to people that may be surprised that have lived, basically you've been in their lives for, how long have you been in their lives? 20 years. Good Lord. Well, 20 years on Fair City and I was first, well, I was first, uh, I did a series, two, two summers of a series called Finbar's Class for when I was 18, 19 and then. I got into First City when I was 25. What was Finbar's class? It was this um, kind of all around, it was about a school, a gr- group of wild school kids living in the inner city. And um, it was a really good concept, it was a really good idea. Yeah. But uh, I think they might have tried to squash too much into one. Okay, but, um, right, yeah, yeah. You know, it was a really good idea. It was written by a guy called Michael Sheridan. It was directed by a Northern Irish man called Roy Haybird. And myself and Hilda Fay, actually a- another actress who's a very good friend of mine, um, who I later went on to work with in Fair City. We she's were the blonde in lady, it. isn't she? Hmm? She's the blonde lady? No, she's dark. She's dark. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry, yeah. So um, we, uh, yeah, uh, we, I did that for a couple of summers. Um, so, you know, there was a lot of heads in that, a lot, a lot of actors still knocking around. Barry McGovern was in it. Was and, he? Oh, yeah, there was plenty in it, yeah. Cause the and there was dance routines in it. Ah, it was kind of like it was kind of like what? Inner Sounds City. like the best show ever. <laughs> no, it's kind of like a cross between Grange Hill and Inner City Dublin fame. That's exactly what I'm thinking. <laughs> Grange but, Hill. Well, you know, it was it was it was a long time ago. You know, so I imagine Michelle Pfeiffer showing up to your school and trying to teach you. <laughs> and you're all trying to teach her dance. Like she, but she's I was the only one who couldn't dance, and they were all trying to teach me to dance backstage. You know, before we go on, whatever. But 
Because yeah. m- much to people's surprise, because you have been Carol in a lot of people's, but Cattle. Yeah, Cattle. Cattle. <laughs> you're, you're actually from Dorky. I am. Yeah. Yes. You couldn't be more not Carol. <laughs> Actually, from Dorky. Dorky. Are you joking me? Dorky. Because <laughs> yeah. that's it. I, who was I? I was telling, because her, herself is from Dorky originally, and I was telling herself's mother, she, well, no. She was nearly half disappointed that you'd <laughs> no. lied to her. You Are know you what I mean? Serious? Well, just just the shock. No, was people like, <laughs> are very going to shock <laughs> when they meet me in person. Well, I don't have an, uh, have a very neutral accent. You know, I don't yeah, have a very. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're not posh people. We're just ordinary people. Um, and my we, word, third we just pull on our gold trousers one leg at a time, no, like everybody you, else. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> or no. our butler does. <laughs> No, but you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm third generation talky. Like they're just ordinary people. Now you can't buy a shoebox in talky. Do you know what I mean? Our house was just a normal house. That you know, and my granny lived there before, and then my mom lived there, and this is the way it went. It, it's it's it still shocks me. Like you know, when you like you have a perception of what you know. Re- now there's always there's nice people and there's mm-hmm. not nice people. A lot of, but just that these people exist. You know the sort of people I'm yeah. talking about. Yeah. Like yeah. who inject their whole heads yeah. and then they, they drive ridiculous, huge ridiculous Jeeps four by that fours that they, on the road. and they can't drive. <laughs> and you, you meet these, like I, I went into a VUCA the other day. Oh, yeah. We live right next to, door to one. They do yeah. lovely bread. They do. They do. It's really expensive. Though. It is ridiculous. But if you're only going in for one thing, like yeah, a loaf yeah. of bread, no, it's a you're treat. like, okay, it's, lovely, it's yeah. a loaf, loaf of bread. But you, like the amount of people who just walk through me, like mm. I didn't exist. Yeah. It's like, what? You, you, you yeah. bank on being posh or whatever, but you're actually ridiculously rude. You're behaving like scumbags. Yeah. Like, you know, it's yeah. funny, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I know it is. It's kind of like a breed, isn't you, it? Well, you can't buy breeding. You can't buy breeding, Tom. There you go. No. Because you're a country woman now. You have to say phrases I've like that. I've been down here a long time. I've been here, well, I first moved down in 2004. And then I went back. How long was I here? I was here for a couple of years. Then I went back. And then um, I had Christopher, my son. And when Chris was eight months old, I moved back down again. And I've been here ever since. So I've been here since 2008, halfway through 2008, going on 2009. So you're full culture, so. I am, yeah. Yeah, it's I a love fun, it. Well, you haven't quite picked it up. Like, you're not saying things. No, Lord, I'm not saying, well, it's queer cold today. <laughs> <no."> <laughs> they love queer, don't it's they? It's queer cold. It's queer cold. <laughs> <laughs> they love that shit, don't they? That yeah. one word, they love it. It's queer cold. Oh, it's queer cold. I heard my son say it the other day. Jeez, <laughs> he yeah. dropped. But um, hey. But that's mm. the thing, because I like we were. I don't know who I was talking with the other day, but on a podcast. But because we're expecting our first child, yes, and I'm. He's due in August. Do you know if it's a boy or a girl? It's a boy, yeah. Ah. It's a boy. Because it was kind of, I get, because the amount of people that have told me, oh, it's great, it's great to hear the surprise. But it was, we and we would be kind of traditional in that way. We'd go, yeah, yeah. be cool. But with just the two of us turned it. couldn't wait. We were bursting. And then <laughs> the woman, before she'd even said a thing, she as she was scanning, she was like, Oh yeah, there we are. He has a lovely head now. Well, you've given the game away there yeah, anyway. Oh, wow, Mrs. you'd have been so disappointed. And you could see her were... just kind of locking up her face. Uh, and she was like, oh, uh, I mean, well, there she goes, no, no, we then. wanted to know. We was, it's grand, yeah, it's grand. Yeah. Went, oh, well, I can confirm that. How exciting. About 95. But I was, I'm wondering, because obviously my missus is from Dorky. Mm-hmm. We now we live in Wicklow. Yeah. And I'm from Tipperary. Mm. What kind of an accent is my young fella going to have? I know. My son has a very, I mean, he said queer the other day, but that was unusual. <laughs> He's got a really neutral accent. Does he? Yeah. Is that what happens quite maybe? place, what's going on. He just, he doesn't sound gory. He doesn't sound any, he, I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll live to see. I don't know. He may, it might be great for voiceovers, kid voiceovers. He He's got a neutral, neutral voice. I need to work on he my neutral be. voice. He yeah. Just, I can't pinpoint how, how, what... How it's going to turn out. Would you encourage acting now in him? Because your dad was an actor, wasn't he? Yeah, I, I don't encourage it in him at all. But the thing is, in the last year, he has um, taken to it. and oh. it's, Yeah, and it's all completely off his own bat. It's completely his own thing. Um, I didn't encourage it because I'm not one of those stage mammies, to be honest. <clears throat> I would prefer if he did something that was a lot more stable. <laughs> Become a carpenter and make a fortune. Well, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> something, you know, that... Isn't as erratic, but I could see it in his in his um, I could see it in his personality a bit as well. I could just see that in him, and then you know, for his confidence, I kind of think it might be good for him. Like he's joined um, Innovations, which is a 
a, uh, a drama club that they have down here um, on a Saturday morning. And he seems to really enjoy it. So if he enjoys it, why would I stop him? Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. now he's in um, Innovations Have a Play. They're opening tonight. He ha- actually can't do the opening, but he's, oh, he's going to be in it tomorrow and on Saturday. So, you know, that's all. He's really enjoying himself. It's down in Gory Little Theatre. So, you know, that's all good. I mean, I don't know where it'll end, if he'll take it on when he's older. I don't know. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be encouraging or not encourage uh, whatever he wants to do but I do I would I would encourage a, a backup plan yeah <laughs> you know get, get I really good at would. juggling or something like do I something. really would yeah, encourage yeah. a backup plan yeah acting is a weird word because I've had a few actors on this like it's mm. just a weird world like like it, like when you're in the zone you are acting and you have you know you're on stage or you're in front yeah. of the camera or whatever it's the best thing in the world yeah but it's like you're nearly like a Navy SEAL. You're waiting for your next mission. Like you're, that's all it is, isn't yeah, it? You're just going, no, it's, give me you know, another one. Tough, yeah. Give me another one. Yeah, like. and I'm very lucky with Fair City and I thoroughly enjoy it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really do. And, uh, you know, it's just like family to me now. Like I'm there so long. They're all my best friends. Are does your man even know. stop you at the gate anymore, does he? He does. He always does he? Me at the gate. Because <laughs> yeah. there was a period there where I was going in once a week. I was going, come on, man. I know. Come on. I but think they have to. Is that the... Oh, he nods at me and I, and I go, hiya. And they let me in. <laughs> but there was one guy who, who used to make me say it every day. <laughs> I go, it's you're me. Ashley O'Neill for Fair City, I'm in it, if you would care to look. <laughs> never watch it. <laughs> he never watched it. That's the line out of so they many people. saying that. But like, don't watch it myself. But you know, we are man the police man, and uh, <laughs> and then they proceed to tell you the whole story of every back character that's going on. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. That yeah. goes on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of course, but yeah, the numbers don't only lie. with some people. The, the numbers are huge. Like. Numbers are huge. Yeah, like it's doing about four hundred thousand a week. Like more sometimes. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Good lord. Yeah. Because I mean, but and that's so that's what I mean. Like you've been in people's lives. Yeah. For so long. Like. I kind of forget that. <laughs> yeah. Like, you you know, you're going down to the shop to get I don't yeah. know, a tub of ice cream or something. They're going, how are you, Carol? Oh, I know. Yeah, is that the... I was down in Little one time and I was behind the toilet rolls when a man <laughs> picks up his mobile phone and he takes a photograph and goes, the wife loves you. <laughs> it's just like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, well. But look, it's great. And people are lovely. You know, yeah, people are lovely, and they stop you on the street, and they go, "Oh, keep away from him," or oh, "I love you with him," or you well, know, that's, that's, don't let him back in. And I think that's the thing. I think people are generally sound enough. Ah, like, they are, I mean? and they like, enjoy it. You yeah, know? They yeah, enjoy yeah. following the characters and seeing what's going to happen to all of us, and following the affairs and the plots and the twists and the turns. And have you gotten? A, have you gotten? I'm sure you must have at some stage gotten a script. You went, "Oh Jesus!" Like, oh yeah, I mean, plenty of <laughs> times you go, "Wow, are they going to do that?" You know, um, but in general, I just let them, I mean, it's up to them what they do. But, you know, you just, I don't know, I've been very lucky with my storylines. Yeah. You know, they've, I've never, they, they always come up with them, you know what I mean? And then they, if they see a spark between two actors that works well, um, you know, they go with that. They, they generally. Oh, is it that, is, is it loose enough that way where they. It's w- not, but I mean, they, they've said to me before that works, that doesn't work. You know, you, you know, they go with what what they know works yeah you know what I mean and um like you work with some actors and actresses you know the way there's just that yes. chemistry that yeah, yeah, yeah. happens it's like yeah. oh well, we work well together yeah. you know and you know writers can see that you know so they often follow the twists and turns and then also the development of your character you know and I've, they, they've, I've been very lucky with what the writers have written for me because you, you were even saying that now I, I see I was I'm so inexperienced in this this carry on life but I just kind of go along with what people tell me like but it was um, on that first series of Demo and Ivor where you're going you look like it looked like such good crack and it was so funny and all like I found the director on that because myself and Andy would easily just down tools and go on the lash together like yeah he went we're just going to let this one play out and see where it goes. Yeah. And we keep recording and yeah. we'll find some funny shit in the middle yeah. of it. Like, and that's yeah. quite literally what I mean, happened a few yeah, times. I mean, like, I, 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 they've never said that to me, but I, 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 I kind of see that. They know when things work. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It's like an actor feels it, the writers feel it, you know. Yeah. Production feel it. It's like, oh, that works, you know. We'll run with that. We'll, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And yeah. From, from a young age then, like, did, was, it, was that the goal? Straight into acting? Or were you going, yeah, I might try... Backpacking around uh, I Southeast think, Asia uh, for a while and quite find a, myself. I, I don't know. I uh, Quite honestly, I suppose, looking back, it was probably written in the sand. You know, like my father was an actor. 
my uncles are actors. Um, <clears throat> it was just always there. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I used to say to my father, kind of have to get on his nerves. No, I'm not going to be an actress because I can't think he wanted me to be one. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I was like, I'm not going to do it. No, I'm not going to be an but, like, I was always going to be an actress. <laughs> 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 That's the end of it. I was on, I remember... It's like nearly a farmer's son, like, you know, whatever you're... I think I just was. Like, he put me in Waiting for Godot when I was 11 and playing the boy. There's a poster up there. I was 10 in the Project Art Oh, Center. my God. You know, my uncle um, directed... Is that, that you? That's me, yeah. So I was in a mime drama there. My uncle uh, studied under Marceau, and that was my dad's younger brother, and he, he put me in a... Mime drama in um, the project, so I was always uh, that was always there. It was always open to me. I was, it, it was always uh, um, present in my life. Yeah, going to rehearsal halls and dad picking me up from school and me hanging around waiting. You know, so I, I, I was always exposed to it. Yeah, you know, and it was just sort of natural. And then when, then when I was around nineteen, he brought me over to Buffalo because he had emigrated when I was thirteen or so. And he brought me over to Buffalo, New York, where he'd opened a theatre company called the Irish Classical Theatre Company that's still going on. My uncle now runs it because my dad passed away when I was 23. And he put me in, not there, but he opened another one in the Bronx, um, South and Jimmy Smallhorn. Do you know him? He was in Love, Hate. He's a yeah. good, he's a lo- he's what a great a, name. Yeah. He's <laughs> what a great name. <laughs> but he, he uh, they put me in um, uh, Peg of My Heart. So, and then he started... What age were you when you were in Peg the Bronx? Heart, in the Bronx, 19. Right. And then they put me in Lovers by Brian Friel. We did that in Buffalo. And then we did it in New York in a few small theatres. And then he died when I was 23. And then I did, um, uh, what is it, uh, Shadow of a Gunman from my uncle back over in um, the Irish Classical Theatre Company in Buffalo. And then... I did uh, what was it? Martin McDonough's um, The Cripple of Inish Man myself. I did that in the Joe Papp in New York when I was 24. Wow. So I got a good run at it over in the States for a while, you know. But unfortunately, Dad, my dad, Chris, he died when I was uh, 23. So, you know, it kind of changed then and I, I wanted to be home more. Yeah, and then yeah, City yeah. came along. And I'm very happy. That's class. How it went, yeah. And w- have you gone back to the stage much since? A bit, um, at times I did a good bit in my 20s in Andrews Lane and things like oh, that yeah, and yeah, I would yeah. have toured a good bit um, I did Lunasa in The Gate in my 30s um, and I did the, I, did, I worked in the last couple of years and then I had my son and that kind yeah. of thing and then the last couple of years I did The Chastitute in The Gaiety and I did um, Boom uh, a kind of light hearted fun play in The Gaiety as well so I kept my hand in a bit you yeah, know? yeah 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 I have an 11 year old son as well so you know, well, I juggle a lot. The stars are aligning now. Can we find a play with that? Both of you could be in. Ah, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> no, we couldn't do that. <laughs> Not at the moment. You no. played the mother, the angry no, mother or whatever. No, the angry mother, yeah. He plays the tear away. Yeah. Just trying to, just trying to live my life, mom. <laughs> yeah. Let's write yeah. this play, Ashley. So this it's grand. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy out with the whole thing. You know, it's good. And I love living down here. It's peaceful, and I like being down by nature and stuff. Like I'd be very you're back right onto a forest here, aren't you? Or We're out the front? The front uh, yeah, the front, front. Is the forest. Yeah, the back. This was all woodlands, apparently, years and years ago, and um, they did this. But like, if you turn right outside. We're in the country. Yeah, and yeah, And then yeah. I'm 10 minutes from town, from Gorey, and I'm an hour from Dublin, so... And the beach is just up the road. And the beach is 10 minutes up the road. I live on the beach. I'm on the beach every day. I love it. That, I mean, you, yeah, that's really a nice balance me. to get, it like... It took me a while to settle, though, you know? Like, no doubt. Yeah, it took me a while to go, though, this is my home, you know? It's strange, and it is different, and it is very countrified, you know? You, it's, oh, yeah. There's no... Like, when you come from Dublin, and then you come here, it's very different. I mean, there's many buses that bring you home at night, and everyone <laughs> shares them. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, Cousins, yeah. And she's yeah. this, like, eight-year-old lady that, like... Right now. I swear to God. And everyone's terrified of her. Nobody mess around. Really? And they, yeah, and they sit in this little minibus and everyone gets lift home. I love that. I always that. find it's real Father Ted. That is... happens. <laughs> that's queer good. It's queer good. Yeah. <laughs> so. well, that, and that's, yeah, because we were out the country country and it was just wild and it was we were but we were out by uh Kildare nearly in Offaly. Oh and really? it was yeah in a place called Broadford and very rural. Very rural like like Did you the, get bored? No, because we like we were always working anyway. Like yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No we didn't. No like um we're always at something. 
there was always some project to be done or something yeah, to be done. So yeah, you just and I was just wondering, because I, it was a huge culture shock when it first came down, but now it's been so long. And also I think Goria has expanded so much. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And like, I literally am eight minutes walking to the town. So, and it's a very alive town. It's very vibrant. Yeah. It's not depressed. Our yeah. is more depressed, unfortunately. It's it's grand, but it just doesn't it's have kind as of much forgotten a, about. Yeah, a yeah. bit, you know. Um, but Gory just seems to be thriving, so. I always notice that any time I play Wexford, it, and it was during the recession or anything. We need a new school, though. Really? Yeah. Let's petition a new do. school. I'm telling you. Um, but I always found, it, in Wexford, for some reason, it was always good crowds out to, do sta- to come see stand-up. Really? Yeah. And it, but you go maybe for a drink afterwards or whatever, and it was the town was always doing well. It was always, I, I, it was. There must be money in Wexford that was that the rest of the country didn't have or something like. Yeah, it was something I noticed where other towns you go to and they'd be on their knees, like you know. My mother always said to me there was old money in Gory. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, a lot of rich Protestants down here. No, yeah, probably all. (laughs) (laughs) It's all talky people with their holiday homes down in Gory. That's what it is. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But uh, but that's that's the thing. I I Nat- Natasha was from. She always had a thing to move to the countryside. And mm-hmm. I was like, "Are you sure?" Yeah, because she, she saw where I came from. It wasn't. It wasn't even this. We're talking rural, rural. Okay, you're like, really used rural, to rural, rural. Yeah, yeah, farm yeah, yeah, shit, yeah, like, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? But she was like, "No, nope, it's what I want." I yeah. said, "You sure?" Because can... I was always partial to it too. So it didn't take. Even though I couldn't have afforded where I grew up, quite honestly, I would have grown out of it anyway I, it, was, yeah. it was neither one or the other yeah. I liked the city it was too suburban for me nothing would have changed do you know I, I get wanted you. a new life and it all became a bit twee anyway you know mm. Ducky is lovely but it's quite as you spoke yeah. earlier of the, the <laughs> club that can be in Avoca and all that you know I wouldn't have fitted into that but it's lovely to go back and my mother lives there and it's you know it's very beautiful but um, I love being down by the sea I went, I went all over Climbing Hill the other day, my cousin lives in Dunleary, and it was lovely. It's a beautiful place, but it's not for me anymore yes, to yeah, live yeah, on yeah. a full time basis. Yeah, I prefer the vibe here. I find it more just suits me better. She misses cousins in the bus to be going Mrs. home with, like in the bus and all that. <laughs> yeah, and I often wondered to 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 change tech. Do you know, like these, they put on these these warnings, or not warnings, but at the end of a show, like it goes, if you've been affected by any any things that you've seen in this episode, you know, of a lot of time you'll see it in EastEnders because there's a lot of misery in EastEnders. Mm. But you know, they put a pit on the end, like anything that Carol went through. Did you have real people coming up to you and go, you know, yeah. that helped me through it, like, or yeah. you know, or I, or or do, are that people are people that forthcoming, like you know what they I mean? They are. I got letters. Did you get letters? Yeah, I got letters. Because um, Carol went through sexual abuse. She's a survivor yeah. of sexual abuse, which I thought was so clever, the writers, because they wrote her as such a volatile, uh, damaged, kind of wounded person, you know, for so long. And you never really, you knew that she had a hard upbringing, but you never really knew quite why. And I always suspected that that's what it was. I yeah. always suspected. And, and her complete distrust of men and her choices of men and... All this, and then they did this twist in in 2016, yeah. which was so clever because the character had been around for so long, and she'd had the likes of Billy Meehan and oh, like Jesus, all these yeah, awful yeah, things. Yeah. So you could have said it's just that she'd had bad choices when she was, you know, a younger woman or whatever. But then you saw how it went back to from when she was very young. Yeah, and yeah, I thought yeah. that was so clever of the writers to do that. Yeah, and um, so we did this um, thing about her being sexually abused this all came up when she was finally found the love of her life Robbie and she opened up to him and said like this is what happened to me yeah and so that was pretty intense and they wrote that and I really wanted to do it justice and um yeah I got letters from women um through that I also got letters when uh, she went through the domestic abuse of Billy Meehan and I got letters uh, through that time as well did you yeah wow yeah that's amazing. It, it really like, does. Like it's like, you know, a lot of people who, a lot of people, like our city. It's it's all happening in like Fair City goes into people's living rooms. Yeah, you know what I mean. And there's a lot going on in different living rooms all over the yeah. country. You know, so it affects it affects it. So I suppose sometimes if they connect with the character, they feel like you know. They connect with that because so, you yeah. don't think about that when you're physically on on the day or whatever. Sure, you don't like. Um, you just try and do it justice. I'm yeah, very yeah, well yeah. aware <clears throat> uh, that I had a responsibility to do it well with the sexual abuse storyline yes. and the domestic violence storyline. You have to do it justice because you know some people have really lived that. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are there any perks to be playing Carl? 
like we we're talking about getting tires before we start. These are very real things, like, like, but could you pull into the tire place and go, "How are you, Carl?" No, no, ah, Jesus. <laughs> No, I wish, like, you know what we mean? need to Palace get on. cabs, give me some free tires. <laughs> um, no, I don't get any perks. They're I'd totally, love to get some perks. You totally should get perks. I totally would love to get some perks. But no, I, maybe I'm really bad at it. It's just a bit, of, I don't know, I'd be too embarrassed to say. It wouldn't happen. They'd just laugh at you, wouldn't they? Although I know some people in the past that have got perks. But really? I'm not one of them, yeah. Who's got them? What have they gotten? Well, I know some people that are in the public eye, not necessarily in Fair City, that get perks. But mm. I'm not one of them. I think you've got to be more proactive and pushy to get those things. Yeah, I think I'm so. Instagram is a big thing, I suppose, these I days. I don't do all that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause not it, my thing. Yeah, they, I, I went to follow you on Instagram. It's not the same Ashling and Neil at all. No. Completely different lady altogether. Yeah. I was like, okay, fine. No, I couldn't keep up with all of that. I know, it's, it is hectic I went going. to join Twitter just to check out something and then I just made like a red dead friends when this isn't for me. <laughs> I love how you said it, like I went to join Twitter, like there's a, there's a shop downtown that does Twitter. I needed to look up. <laughs> and then, I don't know, I've got a few friends on it anyway, but it's, it's not really, oh, listen, there's too much information going on. Way too much, yeah. <laughs> it's oh. hard enough to decide from my own thoughts, let alone look at all of that stuff. And that's when I, the, the only reason I do Twitter is to it be is silly. A, well, it's a major part now of yeah. publicizing or yourself. Twitter or Instagram. That. It's just to be silly. Mm. That's all I do is silly. But apparently it is a major part of kind of... Oh, it's, 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 oh I, I'll tell you a good one. I mean, I do maybe the, I'm missing out. I do, you, you, it, is enjoy, like, it is enjoyable if you take it for what it is. Mm. It's just on the internet. It's not real. No, yeah. it's the people that think it's real, that it is actually real life. They're... They're mm. the idiots that put the bad name on social. This kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. If you take it for what it is, it's just having to crack in a virtual world. It's really not real at all. Like mm. real is that cup of tea we're drinking. You can't drink a fucking Instagram cup of tea. Like, but I, I was talking with a chap. He's in Bird Dance College. In uh, he's one of the dancers that's in. I do the panto in University Concert Hall in Limerick every year. Okay, and uh, maybe that's a, you'd have some crack at that. Oh, You'd have some crack in the 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 panto down the, Limerick. Yeah, I like, minded it. Yeah, I yeah, minded it. Um, and but he was telling me that it's big now. To you may get picked based like he's an unbelievably good dancer. You've never seen a young fella dance his guts out like mm-hmm. you. Like even if you know nothing about dancing, you go, that lad's really good. You know, and he's better than all the rest of them that are there. Yeah, but he was saying that having your number of Instagram followers counts now towards your audition. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. Someone else was saying that yeah. to me. Is that for real? That's I what, think that's a bit. This is coming from a kid odd. who's in, he's in Bird, which is, I mean, it's a good dance college in, in London. And he was saying, yeah, like it's to get on the whole world tour kind of thing of something big. A lot of these days, a lot of times it requires, they, it will be something to look at and they'll go, hmm. I don't know if I agree in all that because I mean it's all about selling tickets yeah, that's all it is it means that you have to expose yourself so much uh, yeah 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 and you know that's not for we're all about mental health these days yeah and that's not for everyone no you know, no no it's not no. for everyone to be going up and pouting their lips and going hello look at me 24-7 I don't know how mentally healthy that is especially <laughs> for some people that might be performers but be more introvert of nature yeah you know? yeah yeah and I don't know if that should be, I don't know if that's right. Oh, it's not right at all. That, yeah. You know what I mean? That you should judge anybody on that because because he himself is putting more time into dance training than he is Instagram. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And he would wipe the floor with most dancers yeah. I've seen in the last three years. But he was. He, this is what he was saying to me. And I went, that's the way but it's that, going. What, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Because sense has little to do with it. But when I investors know. want tickets shifted, Cheekers, okay. they want to see, oh, you've got 12,000. That kid only has 500. Okay. That person's 12,000. Wow. They're going to have a better hit rate of flogging tickets. My God. Wow. Yeah. That's horrendous. That's where it's going. It so is talent is not is secondary now. Yeah, it seems to be. Well, it's the same with stand-up. Same is with, it? Yeah, yeah, So yeah, you've yeah. got to play that game. So this thing had shut off, but we're back on. We're back on, yeah. To clip it together. We, I have noticed though, because you know you're forever thinking in your head you're young. Like, yeah, I know. But although I've always... I'm deluded I've, when I look in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 20 I know I am <laughs> but, it's, but there are telltale things for me like like, so like cause you're just you're going yeah I can definitely still just a youth but for me <laughs> it's having a couple of beers cause I don't get I don't know is it training but I, I'm telling myself that I'm not training enough in, in drinking but I know it's my age too like 
I cannot stand up to the things I used to be able to stand up no, to before. Definitely like, definitely not. I have to be careful of shit now. Like, you know, yeah. I think I'm becoming slightly lactose intolerant as well. Like. All of that. <laughs> I yeah. don't know what. I joined the gym. Did you? I did. Well, I started the gym around four years ago. And I'm one of these people that, okay, I always liked the outdoors. I always like swimming, things like that. But you wouldn't have caught me in a gym. It was sort of like, what? Yeah, a gym? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me? The gym? <laughs> no. <laughs> and I actually had a couple of friends and they had started going. And I kept looking at them, looking better and better. And I was like, God, imagine that. Fair play to them. Imagine that. I'm never <laughs> once thinking that could be something I could do. I love that. Did you didn't like, make that? God, aren't you amazing? See you now. And then eventually, I don't know, I, I was actually, I was a bit stressed actually at the time. And I thought, I've got to, I've got to work this out of me. Yeah. So I went up to the, the, the gym and I went to this guy, Emmett Gregan. He's in Gory. I went to him for just a stint, you know, yeah. to get going. And he was reasonable and uh, uh, went up for 20 kind of classes. And I got really into it. And I just found it so helpful for my head. And I dropped weight and I did really well for two years. Then I kind of stopped for yeah. a year and I could see it all creeping back on. And then I'm back in it again now the last six months, you know, but not as intense. But I do find it really helpful. You know, I find it really good. But as you were saying, oh, a few beers now and you'd be... It, it, I'd, I'd take you a couple of days to recover whereas when you're younger you know sure oh, if, it, if it was Saturday night for me it'd be Wednesday before I feel right yeah, again like. no it's not it's not able for all of it anymore <laughs> it's ridiculous isn't yeah, it yeah. when the wheels start to come off the wagon you're like come on yeah come on I know <laughs> I know and I do think it's age I do think it's age you know but I can't read like our sitting room is quite long so the I can't read stuff on the television anymore. Like, well, that's only happened to me in the last two months, where I had like I had to do an audition there around uh, two weeks ago, and you know when the sides came in on the yeah. printer, I looked at them and I'm, oh, what's going on here? And I, I, I just thought if I, I just needed maybe those little glasses that you get in the pound shop or something <laughs> just to magnify it, but I don't want to give in. I don't and that's the thing; in. it's given in, isn't yeah. it? It's like once you do I it, it's like, what? Are you serious? Is this really happening? Like, I mean, I still, you know, we're relatively young, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are. We are. <laughs> we are. But it, that's, and that is, yeah, that's the thing. You're like, do you bite it's the bullet and go, weird. I want it, yeah. It's just weird. I still think of myself, you know, like, because in your head, a lot doesn't change. I mean, I have changed tremendously in loads of ways. For, and I, I like the whole journey of life of changing and becoming, like, I'm much more at ease with myself. Yeah. Than I would have been, you know, I, it's, a, it's such a big learning thing, isn't it? And your confidence and the whole lot of what's yeah. important, what's not important, who's important, yeah. you know, who's not important. Really what's important are your loved ones, yourself, you know, isn't that really, That's it? you know, you're being at peace with yourself, all of that. So in one way, I love getting older because they do become more centered, I think. Y- that's a great way of describing it. And you just get kind of better. You just get better and you appreciate the show, like, it yeah, more. Yeah, I really yeah. appreciate it. You know, I'm mature enough now to go, I'm lucky to be here. It's great. I've got good people in my life and I really enjoy life. You know? It's yeah, and I, I was only it was long drives are a great thing for that, like yeah. when you're thinking or whatever you're going. Which is either I listen to podcasts or or just mm-hmm. don't just contemplate stuff or whatever. But you I was kinda going you're full sure, like mid twenties. I have this shit figured out, mm. man. No, you haven't. No, you clue. don't. You haven't a clue. <laughs> you haven't a clue. Got a clue. Not a clue. Have you got like? No. And it's only just as the decades roll by, you're like, oh yeah, yeah. still haven't. But at least now you know you don't fully have a clue. Yeah, like you of know course. what I mean? And yeah. It's constant, isn't it? You're yeah. constantly getting better at it and learning and falling down and getting back up. And you know, I'm in a good space at the moment. It's great, and I've got great people around me. I've got great friends. I'm very lucky. Plus, you're in the countryside too. Yeah, that d- decompression, like from being in Fair City, mm-hmm. and and then driving. I like the drive down. You it, know, it, go through Glen of the Downs. And yeah, people often say, "Oh, Ashling, God, would you not prefer to be in the city?" And it's just so much nearer. And I go, no, because I get that hour thinking time of just coming home. As, as, long as, as it takes them an hour to, to drive half city. mile across the city, you like know, you know. And at least my drive home is beautiful you know I go through Glen of the Downs it's one of the nicest motorways it there is, is. as yeah. motorways go it's one of the nicer ones it like is. yeah yeah I like driving as well but I talk even to my 98 year old grandfather I was up with him there the week wow yeah. 98 years old 98 oh you're so lucky they do uh, they live long on that side of the family they do that's like, yeah, amazing ridiculous my like. nana was 92 
And I was very, we were very close. I lived with her when I was little for a while, and I lived her with her um, when my, in my 20s, when my dad passed on, I lived in the little flat beside her. Right. She lived to 92. Uh, she was great. Grandparents are great, aren't they? They are great. Like, and he, even he was trying to remember something the other day. I was like, oh, Jesus, I can't. Isn't it terrible, Lisa? You know, I, 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 I can't remember that. Mm. I'm like, you're 98. Why would you? Of course. I can't remember that. But the way he kind of looked to me was like, so? I might be 98 externally. Yeah, I but, know, but my I'm brain still is still thinking. Yeah. You know, the same way I thought in the 50s and 60s. What kind of like, things would he forget? It was just quite literally, it was, um, but it was, it was a minuscule thing. It was like, who's, it was something about somebody's wedding. Mm. And he was like, God, yeah. Who was that that got married that mm. time now? I'm like, no, that's mm. fine. At 90, man, I can't remember yesterday. Yeah. Are you joking me like that you can't? Yeah. I was like, no, I just, uh, it's it's just funny how the old brain starts yeah. to slip. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, no, that's it, well, the same thing complaint. was that. Yeah. No, the same thing for him. Yeah. Do you think he'll make the hundred? Well, that's what he's banking on for the free money. The free, you get your hundred euro, don't you? Oh, it's way bigger than that oh, now. Is it? What is it? Oh, it's into the thousands now. Get out. Yeah. Is it? He had it checked out. I thought it was 1,400 or 1,500, right? And he had it checked out the other day. He says, I, I hit the ton. He goes, I hit the ton tax-free. Because this fellow had his own businesses for years, so it's okay. all about tax-free. Tax-free. I'm like, going to close to 4,000 euros. Oh, wow. I'm like, are you serious? He goes, yep. What will he do? I said to him, because what are you going to do with it? He goes, probably have a party. It was like, really? okay, all right. <laughs> he loves all that, does he? Well, he's just like, he's... His body has slowed down no end. Like he's, he's got a walking stick now and stuff, but it just kills him because he was such mm. an active farmer for years. Is he your dad's like. father? My dad's father. Mm. Like, and your dad still runs marathons in his late 60s. Like. Wow. Yeah. Like, and he, my grandfather's parents lived old as well. That's really great. And their parents lived really old for the time as well. They just, and that, they live I really long. I live really old. Yeah. I, yeah I, I have no interest in going anywhere. Like yeah. I want to just <laughs> suck every little bit out of it. <laughs> to, what, to what extent would you like, because there's I want to be able to walk around yeah. or at least to hobble about, you know, I don't want to, <laughs> I wouldn't like to be, you know, like a mobile and, you know, I, 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 I couldn't bear that. Yeah. <clears throat> but if I have any sort of mobility and I'm able to get around and I still have some network of pals or things like yeah. that and, you know, yeah, I want to be able to live as long as possible. I want to see what happens. Yes, <laughs> that's the killer. I think it's the nosiness in me. It's like... The nosiness. <laughs> I just want to see... Go on, I want to see what happens. Like, I you know, want to see as much as I can. You only get one shot at it. Well, talking to him, I was asking him about that. Like, if you enjoyed seeing what... He goes... I'll be honest with you, after 98 years, you realize nothing really changes. The real stuff doesn't really change. I was like, are you serious? He goes, yeah, people don't change. He says, we may be getting better as people. You know, like that was the way he was like with, I think what he was trying to say was emotionally and stuff like that. Mm. We're better with our emotions. Says, but the, the world seems to go in cycles. Yes, he says, it does. I says, I've seen it come around twice, mm -hmm, basically. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, he says, and I'm guessing it'll just, got, modern stuff will all happen and people... You know, we'll have wars on this side and that side, and there'll be people bickering over political reasoning yes. and all the rest of it. But nothing really changes. Nothing just, really changes. But I was like, but it must be cool to still see electric cars and stuff. Oh no, he says that's cool. Yeah, yeah no, no, yeah. that stuff is cool, and yeah. mobiles are cool, and all that mm -hmm, stuff that you can mm -hmm. walk around. He says, in the fifties, do you think? But he was always kind of a forward-thinking bloke, so mm -hmm. nothing ever utterly shocked him. Like, yeah. like he was an, an electrical engineer. Okay. So, like, he was putting up wind turbines in the 50s for wow. people. You know, like, so... He was ahead of his time. He was ahead of his time, like. But mm. it is funny how he was, like... It's class to yeah. live this long. It is to see... So he appreciates it. He's, he, 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 he likes still being around. Totally. And I asked him the other day, I said, so they're talking about... Because some people are kind of like, I've had it, you know. Oh, I know. My friends are gone. I'm not feeling good. Why am I still here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. I've known people oh, with, no, with that disposition as yeah. well. Like, I said, like, he also said, like... But I'd be happy, you know. I'm ha I'm comfortable with dying. He's comfortable with yeah, yeah, lot, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, you know, he was. It wasn't stressing him out, mm -hmm. witch or weather. He yeah. was happy to rock on. But it was like, you know, if I, I hope it just goes easy. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean. Yeah, like yeah, it isn't yeah. some horrific. Yeah, I yeah. Said, well, you're hardly going to come off your fucking Harley Davidson. Like <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Like at 120 miles an hour. Like I know. But um, <laughs> I did put it to him. I said, well, here's the thing, right? Say you were, say they had developed the engineering, which I bet you any money within the next 20 years they will where you can transplant your consciousness, your brain, shall we say, mm -hmm. into like a Robocop situation. 
into like a machine. Mm-hmm. Would you be comfortable with that? And he was kind of going, nah. <laughs> no. <laughs> if no. it's got to go there, no, I'm fine. No. But it was the like I said. But do you want to continue seeing stuff because you could potentially live forever? Then like, oh would, my god, it's you know, so crazy because they're getting there. I know they're getting there. Said that to me lately. That what do you think of that? I'm a bit freaked out by it, to be honest with you. But I'd be old school that way. I think I. So what exactly happens? Excuse my ignorance. The idea is that the, that what they're trying to forge towards is, um, I think, bit by bit, with as they get would say fake arms and stuff just start getting better and better and linking them into your nervous system to where they become perfectly they can kind of clone you basically I think the idea is not to clone you but bit by bit they reckon the way it'll go is that the human fleshy body will be just it'll be done away with to the point that we'll move into just our consciousness will be inside a robot so it'll be our same thought processes and all the rest of it. we'll just be completely be mechanical yeah mm. zero oh crack God. Zero crack. Zero crack. <laughs> Zero crack. That sounds all very. Cool. Your face just t- told the whole. I like friended a podcast just to just. What's that Ashley's about? face just told me. Oh Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not for me. No, mm. I don't think so. Like, I mean, if you did get lose an arm, be class to be able to get a perfectly working arm. Yeah, like, of course. Or a leg, or <laughs> like whatever. the rest of me. To but be the rest okay. of you, yeah. <laughs> Where does it stop? Like, yeah, I know. You know, but, but that was the the reasoning behind it. But I, I then I talked to another fellow who works in this is terrifying. He works in artificial intelligence out in a place in Galway. I says, so what's the crack? Are you are you, are you going to be the result of the Terminators? And he went, no. But I don't think machines, if they do become self aware, will want to kill us off. And if they did. They probably wouldn't bother because the machines have the long game to play. They'll mm-hmm. always play the long game. So mm-hmm. they'll probably using apps like Tinder and all these other ones. They'll probably just breed us out. Just get real bad breeding against real bad breeding. Like we we're saying, you can't buy breeding. Just get really, you know, re- and just breed us down and possibly turn into a Planet of the Apes style situation. Christ like <laughs> Your face. <laughs> we went from lovely gory to, <laughs> to fucking this. The planet of the apes. Planet of the apes, and we're all machines. <laughs> oh, here. <clears throat> so maybe, maybe it mightn't be as well to knock around and see, see what happens. You'd be like, <laughs> yeah. When are you thinking all this could really, really start? Way, way down the line. We ain't way see down it. the line. Way down the line. Like five hundred years down the line, we okay. ain't gonna see this. Like, no, we'll be long, long gone, long gone. Mm. Our, our, our. our TV stuff maybe still around like or whatever like but yeah <laughs> we'll be long gone yeah will be amazing to see what it's like um 500 years down the line but also a bit frightening yeah yeah like yeah, yeah what'll be left of just you know we'll probably blow ourselves to bits anyway like yeah. you know <laughs> the happy times the mm. happy times of it all but I mean getting away from that the, is, uh, which do you prefer stage or camera yeah people ask me this they're, they're very different things. They're, they're night and day, aren't they? They're you know, just apples and oranges, really. Yeah, they're yeah. very different feelings. I love being on stage at times because, you know, you get that feeling and you're bouncing off someone and it's live and, you know, and I really enjoy that. But I also love camera. Yeah. I'm so used to it. And um, I'll be honest with you, I, d- I don't prefer one or the other. Okay, yeah. They're completely different mediums. You know, they're completely different totally different feeling and I like camera for some reasons I like stage for some reasons stay I, I like I'm more I'm easy with camera I'm so used to it yeah do, yeah, do you yeah, know yeah. what I mean and stage is camera's hard work but stage is hard work because you got to pump that out for two yeah. hours every night and be on but then again I would be in on camera from eight o'clock in the morning till half six at night yeah do, yeah, do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean yeah, so yeah. they're much of a muchness yeah but the immediateness of stage, do you know, the the whole audience. Um, it's there in the moment. Like, in yeah, there yeah. in the moment, you know, and it's it's an it's intense and dra- adrenaline for two hours. Yeah. Like, oh, geez, get this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's enjoyable. Um, but I always feel like you got to know it backwards. You got to know exactly where you are. You're, you know, it's 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 intense. You know. I think I I if I if I was to ask which I was to wanted to do I think I would probably say stage first mm-hmm. I think um, 
Now, what a good cra- now I haven't had the experience on camera as long either to make a comparison, like yeah. you know that kind of way. I but enjoy camera too. I must say. Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I think at this point I enjoy camera more. If I had to make a choice. Right, yeah, yeah. If I had to make a choice. But I appreciate. Yeah. But they're two different jobs, insane. aren't they? But like, they yeah. Sometimes you live a bit of that. Sometimes you live a bit of that. Yeah. So, do you know what I mean? But if I had to make a choice, camera. But stage, I love at times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Have you, and have you, done, have you done much comedy? I did a bit of comedy. Because you're good crack, like. So I yeah, think. Yeah, I'm pretty I, I enjoy comedy and I, I'm not bad timing and all yeah. that. So I enjoy it. Do you yeah. know, um, I did a, a few comedies in my 20s. Did you? Yeah, I did a few comedy plays, but I haven't in a while. And Carol can be a bit funny now and again, even though yeah, she's heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can sometimes now and again throw a bit of comedy with her. And I love when they do that because like, ah, here we go. Bit of that. Yeah. <laughs> so that's funny. I'd love to do a bit of comedy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Comedy is good. I like a bit of comedy. Try and get you into panto. It gives you... Um, Makes in good form too. There's yeah, you that's and that's why I never fully understand like when you, you people talk about like oh melancholy of comedians and all the rest of it, like you know, the sad clown off stage, you're like, What? Yeah. You almost never meet an unha- a fully unhappy. They just want to be back on stage again, no doubt. Like but yes. do you get a couple of comedians together? Yeah, they're, they're all these urban myths probably. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Oh sure we're all depressed. All depressed. All yeah. depressed. It's you yeah, know yeah. But, <laughs> No, I know. No, yeah, no, I do like comedy, and I would love a bit of it. You know, um, I think it's great. We'll have to get you into panto, so into panto. Yeah, yeah. I did panto in two thousand and seven. Yeah, I did. Um, uh, Sleeping Beauty landmark. We're doing it out in the Helix. Right. Um, yeah, it was quite a heavy panto, though. It was <laughs> kind of like a dark Grimm's fairy tale kind of. Okay. Vibe. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. It was a lovely cast. It was a good cast. It was Barbara Brennan and Mal White and all of them. Um. And I enjoyed it. I played the evil queen. Did you? But yeah, Panto's hard work. Oh, Ooh. is it what? Is it what? My God, we were wrecked. Yeah. You know, like two shows a day, banging that out every day. And that's like, it. Whoa. Like, And there's, yeah, it's, it's not just it, like, there's no like uh, slow moments at all in it. It's no, full it's throttle. Like, isn't it? Yeah. And, but good fun. Yeah. Can you sing? I can hold a note. Can you? Yeah, but I'm a low singer, as you can hear in my voice. I have a low voice. You have a low timbre. I have a low timbre. <laughs> you could be like Sultry the... Sultry tones. You could, <laughs> you could do the caramel bunny. Yes. <laughs> yeah. This, uh, cause, uh, I remember that ad, yeah. I think that was Tara Flynn. Was it? I think it was. Because I had Tara Flynn on it, but on the podcast, but it's so long back now. I'm nearly oh, okay. sure she said it to me. But she And she was, she was like the voice of the... What was it when you... Was, you, was she the talking clock? It was something, oh, yeah, right. it was something she, or it was like, no way. Yeah, yeah, Do you know, yeah, it was yeah. like, or you, you know, you, you ring DSB or something, and she was, press one for her. Oh, okay, You, yeah, you know, it you was mean. something everybody had heard at some yes, stage. Like, yeah. But she was, I'm nearly sure she said she was the caramel bunny for yeah, a while. I liked the caramel bunny. That, br- that cartoon brought out strange things in people, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Jesus Christ, it's a cartoon, relax, lads. It's like, hi, boys. <laughs> what the, relax. It's a cartoon rabbit. Even um, a, a real rabbit, regardless. I mean, like, <laughs> this is all wrong at so many levels. Like So many levels. With a pink bow around her neck. <laughs> so how many, how many typically, how many days a week then would you do Fair City? How, do when does re- it roll, roll around? through on a Monday morning from half nine till uh, for a couple of hours. And then on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, you'd normally, you, you could be in every day. Yeah. You know, um, You'd be in at 20 past seven most mornings. Right. Yeah, and then you finish at uh, 6.30. Um, you know, weeks are different. If you're working outside, you might just be in Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, if you've got, like, a heavy storyline, you're in every day, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, and then sometimes you might not be used one of the days, but that's rare. You know, it's not rare. Well, you know, most of you're most of you're in every day, but sometimes you mightn't be used on a Thursday if you're not needed, or if you're not in any of those scenes. Yeah, that yeah, set. yeah. But yeah, no, it's it's hard work. You know, it's it's full on. Like you have to be on top of your game. You know, because it's a huge um, machine. Unbelievable. Like, yeah, it's a huge I, machine. People I, don't realize. Like, I, I when I moved the organization to that goes into that is something else it's unreal it's isn't it it's very like, well run to keep yeah. it running all the time yeah it's there's no well end no. there's no end in sight no, and like. the women in the production office the whole lot like you know they have when they have to change 
call times or change things or if there's a natural, like the snow comes or they have to, you know, things yeah, we have yeah, no yeah. control over. The amount of work, if someone gets sick or if some, you know, all that kind of thing. It's like, okay, you know, red alert and everybody <laughs> is just down to do, 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 do. And they always pull it off. They all, that's some going like, isn't yeah. it? There's no off day like on no. that. We're not going to make it today. They always pull it off. And also if, you know, you've got some heavy scenes going on during the week and, you know, it's coming to Friday evening and we still got to get them in. <laughs> do, do you know? Or yeah. say there was a technical problem or something like that comes up during the week and that could slow something up and we still got to make the time. We still got to get there. And they always do. And it's because it's so well run. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Know? I did. When I moved to Dublin first, I took some extra work and stuff and I was an extra on what you call it but they made me a featured extra for a couple of weeks where I played a solicitor oh yeah and I think I think my, I was Carl was my name and but my two scenes <laughs> were basically me the scene would open and it would be me basically standing up <laughs> in front I think I was everybody's solicitor because it was, they tried it with two or three different people and I think they used it to and both times it was pretty much me going right so I'll have that for you next week and gone. And then you're gone. gone. Ex- exit. Okay. Did we meet on that? I think we did. I think Appreciate. I was your, I may have been your solicitor Were at some stage. Solicitor? Yeah, I think so. I think I may have been. Oh God, I've had a few solicitors, all right. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, no doubt. <laughs> She's been in the box, in the, in the, in the dock a few times. Poor old cattle. Poor old cattle. Fighting for her life. <laughs> Do you know what? And that, deli- we've, we've done an hour already. Would you believe that? Cool. Would you believe that? An hour yeah, already? Blue. Just just uh, flying. So normally, typically at the end, which is hilarious, people, I go, and where can people follow you, Ashley? And Ashley's like, absolutely nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. <laughs> Don't come near and me. If I catch them, follow me home. I'm calling the police. <laughs> and, um, but, and if you're, if you are shopping for toilet rolls, please don't. <laughs> take photographs don't take of me in Little. photographs in Little of, of Ashley. <laughs> um, Ashley O'Neill, thank you very, very much. This has been brilliant. Yeah, it was a pleasure to talk to you. And thank you for having me on your podcast. My thanks again to Ashling. Fair play. Great episode. Right. Like I said, hit subscribe to this if you haven't already. Uh, give us a rating on whatever platform you're on that allows that. Typically, it's just Apple. They seem to like it. I don't know how much it helps. It does push it up the charts, I suppose, and get it out to the, you know, the more people that listen, the more Patreons that come on board. If you're not a Patreon, have a gander at it because like that, you get early episodes, ad-free episodes, and you do get the back catalogue of the Tom and Jerry show. Uh, three uh, series of it six episodes a series and you do also get the video footage from the ramble pod of my head talking with my face moving uh give it a share if nothing else give it a share there is also the tea republic shop too if you want to buy something it does all contribute towards the show and helps keep the fucking thing going you know yourself bickies and driving to fucking gory ain't for free apparently on Unf- you know yourself but like that at the very least give it a share on whatever platform you're on the more we have on board the better gang uh for all those gigs, go to tomandmanny.com forward slash gigs. It'll be in the show notes. So have a gander through it. There'll be more tickets um, undoubtedly coming on to sale over the next week or so. So, do you know what? Lads, girls, bye, all the rest of you. Go on away and enjoy the weekend. I'll talk to you again on Tuesday. Bye.